Hi, this is Annie. And hi, this is Kevin. And, and we're, we're overcommitted. overcommitted. Nailed it. Yeah, it was really good this week. Yeah. Episode three. Episode three. Thanks for joining us again. We hope you have enjoyed listening so far. You get your radio voice on. <laughs> I know. Hey, everybody. Delilah. Thanks so much. I hope you're settling in for the night. Maybe you've had a nice warm cup of tea Driving and curled home. up next to a nice book. Oh, wait. I, sw- I totally switched where we are. We were driving. Yeah. My mom would drink tea. Going to work. Full mug. No travel mugs. She would just have a like a coffee mug. I do that now with liquid. iced coffee. I just throw an iced coffee in the car with a glass straw. No top. That's Let's wild. go. That's a wild choice. My eye immediately started uh, leaking. You're just nervous about what we're going to talk about today. <sighs> this is our last know. episode, guys. <laughs> First, <laughs> first, second, third, and we're out. Sorry, we're doing this. So what did we do this last week, Kevin? We had such a fun time going to our first professional soccer game. Yeah, we took the kids to the LA Football Club. Yeah. That was really, really fun. A professional soccer team here in LA. I should say that I was calling them the LA Kings, I think only in my head, I think. But for all the whole game, I think until we got home. And then I was like, it's the LA Football Club. It's not the LA Kings at all. I don't know where I got that from. Is the LA Kings a hockey team? LA Kings is a hockey team. Yeah. So I don't know where I decided that that no, was our soccer team. I was team. just looking off distant because I was like, how did she square the circle of the Falcons? Because they're the LA Football Club, but like the Falcons are there. Yeah, well, where did the Falcon come from in the first place? LA Football Club. Sure. But like anything is fine if you're at LA Football Club. If they're the kings, what are we doing with Falcons Maybe the now? Falcon is the king of the birds. And I just have never heard that title before. Not in America. It's a bald eagle, it's a bald baby. bald eagle. Those dirty birds. I don't know where I came up with that. And I'm like, I'm glad I don't think I ever said it out loud to anyone that it would matter. I was never like, woo, kings. And people might have like hoped that she was like, maybe she's just calling them kings. Yes. Because like, they're ruling this field. Tall kings. Ruling the pitch, as they call it. Leggy, leggy kings. It was really fun. It was my first professional soccer game. Was it yours? It was my first professional soccer. So it was the whole family. We brought the kids. Yep. Went to it. Yep. Um, you guys got invited the dumb dads. It was pretty sweet. It was a dumb dad's thing. Nice of you to bring um, me. Yeah. Not anybody else. That would have been weird. They all said no. Oh, really? How yeah. would you ask? Mm, six seven seven seven. it was seven other people seven people's phone number i was just kind of roulette in my contacts just kind of like (laughs) swipe and invite and most of them were like i live in new hampshire (laughs) who is this someone i asked i asked can you get here this weekend um but it was really fun brought them to the first professional game and it was i think we went into it but i think we went into it with the right headset mindset not headset that's a thing you wear um yeah headspace i think we went in going probably not going to get to enjoy this game much oh i don't know i thought it we uh, yeah I guess no so. i didn't think so we brought a five-year-old and an eight-year-old i thought this is going to be dicey at best yeah but honestly from because of where we were sitting and it was like a good enough area that the kids could kind of like keep themselves busy and we were able to watch most of the game it's a bummer i want to be I don't know if it's ever going to go away. I don't know if it's me and my personality. I don't. Um, I get so anxious with our kids sometimes in public spaces, like not and not in a way that I'm not able to enjoy things. I certainly do enjoy things. You just don't sound convincing at all when you're saying this. <laughs> I do have positive feelings, um, but I I'm such I guess a rule follower that like having these two little beings that are mine to make sure that they follow rules. Yeah. And kids just don't, not out of um, any kind of like rebellion or trying to be malicious, malicious intent or anything. It's just, they're just playing and they're just Mm -hmm. unaware. And they, no matter how many times you tell them they're hyped and they really, it really makes me nervous. Yeah. It's, it's a hard thing because, you take them to somewhere like, let's just use what we did. We brought them to a professional soccer game at a huge stadium. Yeah. Bunch of people are yelling. There's loud sounds happening. We were near the wall of fans, for people who don't know, in European football and all now also at some of the clubs here in America. There's a wall of fans that just sing the whole game. We were right near them. So, like, to expect our kids to, like, what I don't know, what did we expect from them? Well, and we were given this absurd absurd privilege which was so nice to go on the field on the pitch as they say yeah and 
there's like a change in grass from the non pitch grass to the grass. I don't know if any of it's real. I think and, our stuff was fake. Theirs is real. Sure. So we were on the side. And there's a lady there that's job is to make sure nobody goes on the pitch and she had corrected us like hey feed off the pitch didn't even realize that because sure. there's just you know like a line keeping you separate like a like, like a you said string. i didn't realize realize but there's a line like well you never went on the subway well <laughs> it's like you know yeah. there's a there's a draw draw rope what's it called there's a rope there's a rope to keep you from crossing yeah. it. It's like can't obviously we club. can't cross it, but I didn't realize like my feet shouldn't be half on, half off type of sure. business. And our kids kept putting our, their feet half on, half off. So I kept telling them, get, get your feet off because we'd already been corrected mm-hmm. by an authority figure once. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then they just, you know, then I, I feel like our older one was like experimenting with like, what about like this much of my foot? Yeah. What about this much of my foot? And then she just also wasn't paying attention. Five-year-old wasn't paying attention. There's also like 20 other adults down the line that are also not paying attention. You see tons of feet half Whole on, half off. Down. So like, you know, they're a little bit of the vibe of like, why are you being so absurdly obsessed about this when like all of these adults yeah. are also putting their feet on the pitch? But I'm like, because we were told. And we don't even belong here. <laughs> what yeah. are we doing here? This is a nice special opportunity. This was a mistake. And yeah. nobody's noticed yet. Don't ruin this. Yeah. But if we're going to be here, at least be very like appreciative and follow all the rules mm-hmm. to the mm-hmm. to a T. To a T. Yeah, I definitely, I struggle with that as well. I think I feed off your energy <laughs> in a bad way. Sorry about you. It's not your fault obviously it's something i need to work on but i think when you get mad i get madder and then you're like and then you're like hey calm down a little bit and i was like you started this fire yeah you do that i don't know that that happened the other night i don't think i was particularly mad at all at the football game but no i i wasn't that night but i do that in general yeah and then you get mad at me and then i get mad at you <laughs> if I get, like, i'm like i had your back yeah. and i'm like no i wasn't mad i was nervous and just like let's keep an eye sound on mad it. And then you were like, yeah. hey, you take it a little bit, a step too far. I don't take it a step too far. I I enforce the authority. I let them Relax. know that we could leave at any moment. Uh-huh. Yeah, you're real. Let's, we can turn this car around. I don't. I, I don't do that that much. No. I did that early on with kids. Like, all right, we're leaving. Yeah. And I think we learned... I learned pretty regularly that that was a mistake. Yeah, I mean they tell you, you not to do you it. You don't want to actually don't don't say it if you're not if you don't want to do it. Yeah, you have to ride that line of your kids having fun and them going to be kids. Like, do you not want them to be kids? Yeah, that's dumb. Well, that's the thing. I feel like I'm acutely aware of letting my anxiety bother them, like because I know that their moods can also swing on a dime, and all of a sudden this thing can become not fun very fast. Yeah, especially when it's something like the other night where we were on the pitch, but we were also like waiting for a while, and they kind of wanted to go do something else, but I was trying to keep them chill. So a lot of my anxiety it doesn't even get transferred to them; it's just building up inside me. Sure. It's just bubbling, bubbling at the surface. And it wasn't that big a deal. But then we did get seated. And then as soon as we got seated, someone told us, by the way, mm-hmm. when this team scores, people throw beer. So you guys are likely to get some beer thrown on yeah, you. Covered, covered in beer, I think they said. Yeah. Yeah. They made it sound like it was going to be dramatic. I don't know if it would have been that dramatic. So then our daughter said loudly, well, I hope they don't score then. And then as people started cheering, she was like, don't score and i was like please stop saying that in this she... group of rabid super fans. fans she was right though we uh, they were shut area. out yeah. they lost uh Might have been our two nil i'm really sorry about that she didn't understand what she was saying this was really the mojo wall and she didn't bring it she had zero mojo she had zero mojo but it was uh it was overall it was a fun night it was an exhausting night as a parent yeah um, we got, I think we got lucky with our seats. I think the kids were, even when they weren't watching, they were kind of entertaining themselves. Yeah. There's no, like, we weren't in a precarious spot where it's like, there's a ledge and they're like, they're going to fall off the whole time because they're climbing on this thing. No. That was never There's nowhere for them worry. to go, which was grateful for. It was really, really great for that yeah. reason. But it was, so it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. And at the end of the night, it was funny that our son fell asleep. Like he just put a, a sweat no a blanket over his head because the fans were so loud and getting to him and he was like they're too loud i'm tired and they put a blanket over his head and like two seconds later was asleep and i was like wow he's really tired and then i realized it was 10 p.m which is insane for them to be out it was really insane and then it was 10 when we got back to our car but still it was 
It was a late night for the babes, but it was oh. a Saturday, not a school night. And then I had an event uh, on Monday. An event. <laughs> I went golf. Sometimes the me time is an event, babe. It is, and that's why I'll tell you. Why. I'll tell you why. Tell me why. So I went golfing with some friends who I haven't really hung out with socially. I've worked yeah. with them in the past, but I've never hung out with them. It was kind socially. of a business thing. It was, but it's definitely you were golfing, so it's a social event. Yeah. And it was funny because the first, I, I no, the whole time, I was gonna say the first half, but I was like, no, it was the whole time. I had this feeling of just like. They don't like me. I'm not cool. Yeah. I'm, this sucks. That's really relatable. And it was the whole time. Yeah. And it was, it's like normal to have that out the gate and then you kind of have a feeling for how it's going. And this isn't a comment on how it got. It was great. Everybody sure. had a good time. We hung out a little bit after. Like things were fun. But I just like, it just reminded me of like how different my life is now than my life was in my 20s. One, I wouldn't have cared that much at all. Yeah. I might have a little bit at first. And then after a little bit, I'm like, we're Pat. We're all friends here. Yeah. Who could care? And now I don't, I don't know if it's having kids or being busy. It's all of it. I don't get to hang out with people that much. It's maybe not practicing that social skill a lot. I feel that a lot. I feel it with our closest friends. We don't get to hang out with friends a lot. Yeah. Um, we sometimes hang out with like the same couple pockets of friends a lot. Yeah. But when I see like close friends that are slightly outside that inner circle, but just I don't get to see them all the time because we don't live close enough or whatever schedules, I feel that the entire time. I'm like, what yeah. I, are am I entertaining enough? And <laughs> as though your your close friends are looking to you to be a clowner, just yeah, to be even just to, to tell an interesting story. It happens. Um, in fact, it just happened recently. We were at a friend's house, and I saw another friend who I hadn't seen in a minute. And she asked how I was, and I had nothing to offer. I was like, good, fine. Full stop. She's like, how's work? And I was like, it's like, oh, fine. And I gave some one of those, like, uh, you know, same yeah. old, same old, terrible, but the fine. Ross was a give. Paying the bills. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, that was it. And I was literally in my brain going, What's, what else is there? Say something else. Like, there's got to be something else to talk about. And then your brain goes to your kids. But you don't want to be that person that's like, <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. my oldest started violin again proud of her <laughs> and don't you feel like even though like again we don't hang out with a lot of people and and part of that part of that adds to like not wanting to story tell a little bit because the amount of times lately that i've like told a story because it's all i have uh -huh. and i go have i told this person this story before <laughs> yeah and i'm trying to read them because they're like and I think the first time they ask a question, I'm like, a detailed question. Yeah. And I was like, where was this? Or like, and this happened like last week. I'm like, okay, good. They don't, Sweet. they I don't know. They haven't told them. Or they're really kind. Yeah. Cause I had that golfing. I had a moment where like the three of them, it was four of us and the other three, we started talking about like this golfer who I don't know anything about. Yeah. And they were all chirping in and I just went, I should just leave. I just leave. I don't have any. You didn't have anything. To I don't add. have anything to offer to this story. There's nothing here. I can't like. I don't even. I can't even say something clever because yeah. like, don't know who they're talking about. So talking about a good golfer, and I was like, you should leave because they don't. You're not there. You're you not there. Take out your phone and your start. People. I gotta check my checking account balance real quick. I'll be right back. No, nobody had their phones out. They were all very present. You so needed it though. In that I moment. can't yeah. do it because then you're the guy on the phone. I thought about all of this. Yeah. And I just had a tough time. And yeah, it was just, it was wild. It was wild having this, like, it wasn't even imposter syndrome. It was literally like, you don't belong here and yeah. they're not enjoying you. Yeah, I have that a lot. And uh, I've realized too, like a an easy go-to escape route of mine, which I think is maybe a bad thing to have as a grown-up, like as a grown-up, maybe like it's a bad thing to have. Uh, as far as like a social setting goes, it's like a good escape route is to just like, I got to go check on my kid. Oh. I use it all the time. Really? If I'm in a social setting and I don't have anything to contribute to the conversation and I was like, oh, I got to go. I got to go make sure that the kids are okay. I got to go look at, see what they're doing. Half the time, I don't even necessarily make it to where they are. I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> I don't believe that. 
<laughs> no, I'll go find him. Yeah. But it's honestly such an un- unfair crutch to have, and you should not have something like that that you can go, I gotta go check on my kids. Because then when you're somewhere without them, what do I, what do I go check on? <laughs> I've got no way to leave a conversation. <laughs> I have no exit. I know, and sometimes you can also just, and maybe this is like you and I did improv and sketch and theater. Yeah. And it's like, you you also don't have to be Oh yeah, you could just full stop. You don't have to be. You can just be there. Yeah, it's one of those like maybe I don't know if arrogance the right word, but it's like you were self centered. But it's like that thought of just like I know what they're thinking. Yeah, Kev hasn't offered much lately, and it's like I think it totally is. No, they haven't. They haven't thought about you at all. Yeah, this entire time. Yeah, because you haven't said anything, and that's fine. That's okay. They don't have an opinion. The needle hasn't moved. Right. You don't always have to have something to contribute. And sometimes you can just listen. And sometimes you can be okay with silence. Yeah, I'm not. Me Because my silence, I fill it in my brain. We in say monologue. on a podcast that we're doing in a room together yep. in our house. We couldn't even sit on the couch quietly. Nope. We were for phones that came out anyway. It's a wild thing. Like I said, I don't, I know it's all of it. It's, it's being busy. It's having kids. It stemmed from like early on when I was out. Being like, I know you, you're always apprehensive about talking to people, mm-hmm. especially strangers. Yeah, no thanks. Specifically strangers. Yeah, gross. I feel like I had that a couple times when I would go out with uh, my daughter, which was when our, with our daughter when she was young, going to like story time, mommy's me, mommy and me classes, because I just see people talking and I'd like, you know, rock on the heels. And yeah. And just like, oh, they think you're weird. Go on <laughs> and move away. And I just walk away. Uh-huh. I won't talk to anybody. Yeah. Uh, you see another dad there, you do the lip thing. Like I make jokes about that, but it's 100% true what we did. Just the, you know, nod. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where it started. I feel like that's what started my downfall of social abilities. Because I was a bartender. Yeah. I was a bartender. I talked to strangers for a living. Right. The ability to just be Bef- parallel with people. Be- yeah. we're, we're just parallel playing with other adults. Parallel playing with other adults. We don't have to talk. We can just stand five feet away from each other and look at our kids or phones. or. Maybe that's the thing. Maybe yeah. that's a good thing. Maybe I'm evolving in a good way and I'm resisting it. Maybe I'm evolving into somebody who's like... who can- a good thing. <laughs> Maybe I'm somebody who can just enjoy... If I know anything about all of the elder men in my life, they're very good at being quiet, not sharing anything, and nobody has anything bad to say I about guess, them. I guess, but they walk by their neighbors and they say hi, you know what I mean? I want to be that person that like walks by a stranger and says, hey, how's your day? Like, I really do want to be that person somewhere deep inside me, just not, it's not surface enough to try uh-huh. to do it. And yeah, I want to be a better friend. Uh, Go on. <laughs> dig deep here i want to be a better wife yeah. i want to be a better yeah, mom there we go. i think the hard thing is also sometimes like getting through the small talk like i think i struggle with like how much small talk do i have before i can be like oh let's talk <laughs> let's talk about how rough things have been <laughs> i know the amount of times you pivot to something <laughs> stupid because we ran out of like the small talk which was like kind of enjoyable yeah did you feel that earthquake on Thursday? That was weird. Yeah, the chandelier was shaking. You're kind of enjoying yeah. that conversation. And then you have nothing and you're like, it's supposed to be another hot one this <laughs> week. <laughs> or you have a story you're like desperate to tell, but you don't want to lead off with that. So you got to get through the, the nonsense first. When would you not be desperate? I guess. Oh, yeah. I when you're like of, you can't come in hot with a big story. You do want to check in on like, them first. Yeah. How have you been? Yeah? Yeah. Anything else? You're done? My turn. <laughs> Yeah, and then you risk them being like, anyway, this is fun. I have to jet. And you're like, no, I have a story. I hit a cop with a car. All right, he's gone. I didn't hit a cop with a car for listeners and the FBI. So I had a crazy night the other night, by the way. The night that you were gone golfing. Oh, by the way, you golfed all day. This would never be allowed. I wasn't proud of it at all. (laughs) I was... No, it was cool. It was a cool experience. You had a day off. It's fine. It was in a nice golf course that never been to before. And yeah. I learned, I work out regularly. Yeah. I didn't feel yeah, good the next day. Your back is messed up, huh? No, I like my abs. My back oh. was fine. My abs are like, I don't know. I was walking a lot. I don't know. I'm, Stuff hurts sometimes. That's what I mean. We're just at an age where it's just all the time. Yeah. 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 But you, uh, you started golfing at noon, which is like not usually your mojo. Usually, if you're going to golf on the weekends, you get up at like, I like golfing at like 5 45, 6 a.m. Yeah. <laughs> because then there's a dog is our sitting dogs. on the curtains. I like to get up at 5 45, 6 a.m. to golf, uh, get there at 5 45, 6 a.m. to golf. And I know that sounds crazy, 
but it gets rid of the guilt that you feel yeah. leaving the family, especially on like a weekend where you're like all spending it together because then you're done at like nine and yeah. you only really missed a couple hours by the time you just silly. You shouldn't feel guilt, but you also, I know we also like sometimes take breaks during the weekend to do work stuff. There's lots of stuff. We have trouble assigning the whole weekend to the family. So, but I mean, I get it. Sometimes I go to the gym <sighs> on a Sunday morning and I'm like, I should get home. Yeah, it's I don't know. It's a silly feeling. It's a couple hours. It's fine. Take your take your moment. I know. And I shouldn't feel... That's a good point. I shouldn't feel guilty about doing stuff like going golfing, especially yeah. if we do it early in the morning or doing it early in the morning because you feel guilty. But I just do. Yeah. I don't know. I get it. There's no fix for it. Kids. I guess I don't... I don't mind if you feel guilty for the kids. I don't ever want you to feel guilty. Like, oh, Annie's got the kids by herself. It's like, that's That's fine. definitely part of it. Why? Just because I'm over here yelling at them the whole morning? Yeah. They have a fun threat. Every kid has a fun threshold. <laughs> Anybody who tells you any different is a liar. Fun threshold. Well, you just reach a point where you're just like, you know, especially those mornings where you're like, mom's gone and they're not going to get screens because we're going to fill this day. And then like an hour and a half later, you're like, she's still got two more hours. I want to give them screens now. Oh, yeah. I'll give them screens. No, I know. I do. But then you feel guilty. Like, I couldn't. I couldn't handle it, which isn't true. Like, screens are great. We watched screens growing up as kids. Yeah. It's a whole thing. We did a whole day. We went to Chuck E. Cheese. We went to Sky Zone. We got our memberships. Bam, bam. Bam, bam. Went to the mall for a minute to go to some store that Lucy was excited to go to. And Yeah. They had a day. Great. We didn't miss you at all. Okay. Okay. But, so you were gone until bedtime, which was crazy. That was crazy. And it was fine. I put the kids to bed. They were definitely like, where is dad? Yeah. Because we haven't seen him all day long. Yeah, I book a commercial like once every two years. So like yeah. that's when I'm gone all day. So to have that happen, that's understandable. They're definitely not they're, used like, to confused. Seeing, not seeing either one of us for, yeah. for a full day. It's yeah. happened occasionally, but it, they're like, wait, what's happening? Yeah. And so, you know, I went to push to put them down, but they were struggling. They were and they they knew you were gonna be home shortly after bedtime. So our oldest was definitely like, mm, I can probably stay up a little bit. Yeah. So there's just like an energy in the house. And for some reason, when you're do- when you're gone, for some reason, when you're gone, I shouldn't say for some reason, I'm sure it's completely understandable. Our dog is like on high alert. Yeah. Like he is a 35 pound dog who is like, I'm officially the man of the house. I have to protect everyone. Yeah. It's very misogynistic, but kind. Is it- yeah, why is he the man of the house? I can protect the house better than he can. Well, actually, hear the story. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. I'll let you feel this one. So he is just barking just regularly. He does this a lot when it's just me and him at home, especially at night. He just gets very confused. Like when you were on tour, there were a couple nights. And it puts me on high alert because I'm like, what are you barking at? Like, is there somebody outside? Yeah. And we have cameras around our house, so I can check the like net, the ring cams and make sure no one's yeah, and no one ever is. Sometimes there's a cat, though. Maybe he he hears the cat. Family of skunks. Family of skunks. We got in the neighborhood. Yep. Um. And so on this night, he's just barking a bunch. Our oldest keeps coming out. Our youngest keeps coming out. Everyone is just like a little bit like activated, <laughs> waiting for you to come home. But I finally think everyone has gone to bed, and our oldest might be awake, but she's at least reading or drawing. And I'm back in the office trying to do some work. And all of a sudden, I heard a huge thump, which sounded exactly like our screen door on our back mm. door, which I yeah. then thought, I'm not sure if I've lost Like slamming it. shut or open? Yeah, or? like open and, yeah. and shut. Yeah. And I'm thinking immediately like, oh, I have no idea if I've locked that. Because, you know, it's behind. It's in our backyard. There's a gate. I lock it every we time. We go in and out of the backyard to That's our- why the dog barks. I lock it every time. We go in and out of the backyard to get drinks from the fridge. Yeah. In the garage, there's, you know, stuff out there we're doing. So my brain thought, I don't know if I locked it the last time I went out. So I booked it. And it's like a big U (laughs) to get all the way from our office to where that door is. Unless Unless you you go through through the the kids' room, room, which I didn't want to do because they were potentially sleeping. And And they didn't want to see you do murder. Right. And, but also, their door is right by that back door. So yeah. it would have been a shortcut. And it also would have been where the murder had probably turned yeah. immediately into their room. But it's right next to the washing machine. So it's easy to clean up. <laughs> so I ran, ran all the way around the house 
into the kitchen, grabbed a butcher knife. At this point, either the murder's in the kids' room or they've already gone back out. Yeah. Or they weren't here they to heard begin you with, which I was thumping aware. down the halls and they're like, <laughs> they <laughs> bolted. I was aware. It probably wasn't a murder. But I did have a butcher knife. And then I just hear, sorry, sorry, sorry. It was a, it was a burglar. It was it was a very apologetic burglar. I'm so sorry. I, yeah. I turned to a life of crime I and I scoped the wrong house. Stop. My friend's supposed to meet me here. Yeah. No, it was our kids. They had dropped something from the top of the bunk bed that was metal. So they saw you. So with they a opened knife? the door and my daughter saw me holding the largest knife we have yeah. behind my back. You know, I was kind of ready to ha- like, wait, wait. Like that's how I was holding it. Mm hmm. And um, don't hold it that way next time. But okay. really, yeah, you just want to hold it like this. Yeah, you just flail wildly. You swing. Well, I think that was more the way you'd swing. Mm. No, no, you want the blade in front of you because then you can swing wildly. Because like nobody's gonna really do karate. That stuff doesn't really work. You're just gonna keep stabbing at them, moving and this. That seems no swiping, slice them up. Yeah, like this. Like you're carving a tree. Oh, okay, okay. Anyway. You're coming down with like a yeah. putting it through the top of a pumpkin. Yeah. No, you want to like. What's the difference? I don't really understand. You have more flexibility with your wrist if it's kind of facing upwards. You have more mobility here where this is just kind of this. Oh, okay. I guess it's this, easier. You can go up and down. Back into me. I don't know. And they can turn it on you. Classic. Huh, well, we learned something. But, you know, I was also. This I is why know. the dog barks. All of these things. <laughs> Leaving doors unlocked. So our, ki- our daughter is just looking at me shocked. And then I was like, I don't think she quite saw the knife at first. And she's like, sorry, we dropped something. And I was like, that's okay. I was re- I was breathing really hard. And I was like, <sighs> and she's like, are you okay? And I was like, yeah, um, I have a knife because she started coming towards me. <laughs> oh, my God, you're going to kill her. No, I just wanted her to know before yeah. she saw it. Yeah. And she's like, why do you have a knife? And I was like, I thought somebody broke into the house. And she's like, whoa, my God. She was immediately like, mom. Jeez. Wow. And then my little, our little is behind her and he's like, you have a knife? <laughs> yeah, he's a really excited fellow. And then she's like, can I see? And I showed her and she's like, that's huge. I was like, yeah, I was really, I was really afraid. And then she was like, I was really afraid that you were really afraid. I heard you running. And then we all hugged and uh, I put her back to bed and I put the knife away. I locked the door. It wasn't locked. It was not? It was not locked. See, Blaney, Shows why the dog was on high bark alert. away, old friend. And then I came back to the office to continue working. And that door was unlocked. No. Okay. But maybe 10 minutes later, our oldest decided it was a good idea to not only come out of her room, but to jog down the hallway towards the office. And that's got Which you going again. Which set me out again. I was like, <sighs> and she was like, what? Sorry, I didn't mean to scare you. And I said, no, it's okay. I just, I guess I'm on edge. She's like, I'm on edge too. And then at that point, I was like, you can sleep in our bed. Just cut out this g- getting up every 10 minutes. And then I walked in probably five minutes later. Yeah. And then you were there five minutes she was later. awake when I got home. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Uh, it was it was too much. And I feel like that energy like permeates the house a lot when you are not around at night. And I don't know. I mean, I'm sure it's me. Just oozing anxiety. It's the walls <laughs> of this house. It's just dripping from every corner. But... It's just I, that, I didn't even feel like I was anxious. I was sitting in the office doing work. A dog's losing his mind. It's just that you started this with being like, don't feel bad for going and leaving me. Don't worry about me. I'm fine. Why is a dog so worried? I'm in charge. I'm a big protector. I get I it. I lift weights. He's like, I've got to protect this woman. She's losing. I don't smell anything. Yeah. The one time she freaked. Did he freak out? When I ran? Yeah. No, not really. Yeah. That should have been telltale sign for you. Yeah. But he was barking. I guess he was barking as I was running around the house. Oh, that's what I'm asking. Yeah, 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 yeah. But then he didn't continue barking. He probably yeah. looked at me and was like, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Weirdo. <laughs> There's a cat outside. I don't know why you have a knife. Crazy. No, he wouldn't say that. He'd encourage that. He'd be like, can I have can that? I, can you give that to me? And he'd put out you tie that off. to the top of my head and I'll use it like a unicorn. <laughs> Stab them. Yeah, so. But you're welcome to leave anytime you need. Not for long periods of time, but. <sighs> Thank you. You're welcome. It's just, this is, um, it's just one of those things. Just the de-evolution of our uh, social abilities, I guess, is uh, what the theme of this is. Just 
We can't even be alone and handle it. Can't be in front of stra- friends and strangers, handle it. I guess we just sit in a little tiny room, just the two of us, and chat in front of cameras, front of cameras and, uh, once a week. And act like we're everything's normal and we're fine. <laughs> Maybe someday <laughs> therapy. Better help. Sponsored by... Yeah, no, subscribe to this podcast so we can afford therapy. <laughs> Please. All right. Well, I think that's a good place to leave it. It's a great place to leave it. Follow me on social. Well, follow us on socials at first, I should say, at Overcommitted Pod. At Overcommitted Pod. And we're Overcommitted Pod at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. I'm at Annie LaFerrier, Annie.LaFerrier on TikTok. And I'm at Kev Laugh on Instagram and at The Dumb Dads on all platforms. Uh huh. So give us a follow. Thanks for listening. Uh, please, if you guys haven't done it, uh, rate us on Apple Podcasts. We're now on there. Yep. Which you either do know or don't know, but uh, we're on Apple, Apple Podcasts. Please give us reviews. It helps bump us up on like Parenting Space and when people are looking for parenting or couples podcasts. So yep. uh, please do that. Take the time to do that and really help us. And we really, really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Let us know if there's something you want to hear us talk about. Let us yes. know if there's any ideas you have for the podcast. Let us know if I should stop saying yeah so much. Yeah. 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 That was an old thing. I think I did better this time. I think you did great. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Good night, everyone. Goodbye. Good night. And good luck. Good luck at work or wherever you're heading. Goodbye.